just bathing in that smoke right now. It smells so good. The most logical thing to do when it's so freezing outside is to stop at another restaurant and we just really, really wanted to eat Korean barbecue. Everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I just landed at Incheon International Airport. I've been to South Korea now, I think three or four times, and every time I land at Incheon International Airport, I just jump straight on a train and go directly to Seoul. But I've never actually been to or explored Incheon City. And Incheon is known for a number of things, including Chinatown and some delicious Korean food. Right now, I have a 14-hour layover, about 14 hours, until I need to catch my next flight. And so I thought it would be a fantastic idea to go straight into Incheon. We're gonna go on a Korean food tour of Incheon on my 14-hour layover, and I'm gonna show you all the food that we eat. This is a disposable transportation card printout machine. Please select arriving station. Two tickets. According to Google Maps, the fastest route to get from Incheon International Airport to Incheon City, actually we're going straight to a market, is to take the train, the airport train, to this station right here, Chongna International City then jump on a bus from here and go down to Sinpo International Market and that's where we're going first. We left Bangkok last night at about midnight and then landed at Incheon International Airport this morning, early this morning. Uh, so it was a late night flight. I slept maybe an hour, maybe, maybe about two hours. So if I look sleepy, just a heads up, uh, in this video, it might not only be the food that's making me sleepy. Oh, it's cold. Oh, okay, that's our first time stepping outside. Oh, it's freezing. Oh. Okay, from here, I think we're gonna take a bus directly to the market. Micah, that's by far the coldest weather you've ever felt. <laughs> and you're smiling. Oh, it's so much warmer on this bus. That heater feels amazing. We just jumped off the bus directly at Shinpo International Market. This is where we're gonna start eating. Oh yeah, and by the way, welcome to Incheon. One of the, the things that you absolutely have to eat when you come to this market is Korean fried chicken with a spicy sweet sauce. And so I think that's what we're gonna eat first. They have some fried chicken, which looks like it might be lightly battered and then deep fried. And then they have this sauce. When she opened the, the sauce container, you can smell that tanginess of the sauce coming off of it. She scoops it onto the fried chicken and mixes it with a plate and a spoon combination. And then she tosses in some sesame seeds and then some uh, chopped up peppers. Okay, there's nothing like starting off for breakfast with a giant plate of fried chicken. Spicy, tangy, sweet, Korean. Fried chicken. It's called dak gangjung. They just generously douse it, just drown it in that sauce. And I didn't exactly know what, how big the plates were gonna be or what size they were gonna be, so I naturally had to order the large size. It's pretty large. There must be like at least 20 pieces of fried chicken on this plate. I think I'm going in with my my fork here, even though you could go in with your your fingers, but it's it's definitely definitely gonna be messy. That's for sure.
Initially, it's a little bit sweet for me, but it is awesomely good. Oh, mm. as you keep on chewing, you do taste a little bit of spice. It's saucy and sticky, like sticky saucy, but at the same time, it's still crunchy and crispy. And then the meat, the chicken underneath it is still really juicy and really like moist. Oh. That drumstick goes down very easily. Okay. Oh. Okay. You're gonna need a lot of the wet tissues. Okay, this is the type of fried chicken with sauce that when you take a bite, you can just feel it like coating your lips and you know you're gonna get it all over your cheeks and all over your fingers and there's just no way around it. I was definitely just kidding myself when I used that fork for my first bite. Uh, so I'm going right in with my hands. Okay, I gotta try one of these chilies. Mm. Oh, the chili is not spicy, but it is really fragrant. A uh, tiny bit spicy. You can kind of feel it going up your nose a little bit though. Mm. I got white meat chicken this time. This is kind of an addictive type of sweet. It almost reminds me of a caramel apple. That's only on the surface of the of the chicken because it's just the coating. Once you get like a big meaty bite of chicken, it sort of mellows out the sweetness and you can taste all the flavors in there. Switch things up with some radish. Oh, missed it. Mm. Very refreshing. That's a little bit sweet too. Kind of tastes like, oh, it's kind of ketchup-y. That's what I was looking for. This is when it starts to get really sweet and sticky down here. Just look at that sauce. That had to be some of the most sticky sauce I have ever experienced. It's like, it's the type of sauce that you might find on your fingers a week later. And it's all over my camera now too. Overall, like the flavor for me honestly is too sweet. Uh, but it, I will admit that it was, it tasted pretty good. And it's, it's like the addictive kind of sweet where you just can't stop eating it. It is so cold outside that we had to stop at the nearest coffee shop and take a break just to, to drink a coffee and just get the heater. Oh man, we are, we are freezing, we're freezing it out. To be honest, it's just way too cold. It's now negative one. The most logical thing to do when it's so freezing outside is to stop at another restaurant. And we just really, really wanted to eat Korean barbecue. Really cool little barbecue restaurant. Oh, she's bringing it to our table right now. Okay, I gotta run back to our table. But it feels like a real family run barbecue restaurant. And she lit up that charcoal. Oh, oh you can feel the heat on that. Oh, I'm so excited now. And this is the meat. smoke right now, it smells so good. <laughs> and she's grilling everything right in front of us and grilling it for us and she just handed me my first bite of meat that... Oh, oh. oh 
that is ridiculous. Oh, the flavor of the meat is just like, it's a, the, the, the marinade is embedded all the way into the meat. It's a little bit sweet and salty. You can taste the sesame. Oh, look what she's dishing out now. This is some soup that we ordered. I'm not even sure the name of it. But there's beef in there, there's egg in there, and looks like um, leek or... Mm. Oh, and she fed us a bite. And now we have all the banchan, the side dishes, the soup, the basket of vegetables. This is exactly what Ying and I were, were craving, what we were looking for, what we wanted to eat on this layover. A base leaf, a pepper actually. Oh yes, to give it some extra heat. A piece of meat goes in. And then grab a clove of garlic. And what she did is she dips it into the, the sauce, the chili paste, to pick up the chili paste and then puts this directly on top of the meat. Put it right on top. Okay, I think that's a perfect bite right there. I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm just gonna wrap this guy up. Mm. That combination. Probably my favorite thing about that entire bite is the perilla leaf. The perilla leaf, it's so wonderfully unique in flavor. It has sort of a licorice flavor, and it's both refreshing and balancing at the same time. And it's just like a, it just like, it, it just completes your entire bite with that salty meat, with the pungent garlic, with the soybean fermented salty paste. It's, it's the sum of all of those together is an immaculate bite in your mouth. You gotta eat it all in one bite. Mm. Even if it's a really big one bite. Oh, I think these are, it might be some of that same beef that this is made with and then egg in here as well. Mm -hmm. mm. That's just like a, you can taste the boiled bones in that soup. Eating soup when it's so cold outside is, it's necessary, it's mandatory. Okay, for my next bite, I'll double up. Meat goes in, then this time I'm gonna grab some of these onions and leeks, which are marinated. Onto the top there. Oh yeah, that half a chili as well, that was perfect. And that soy, I think it's actually soybean, mostly soybean paste maybe. That is just the perfect combination. That's immaculate. <laughs> one of the side dishes, one of the banchan dishes that she served us is this crab. I think it's blue swimmer crab in chili. And I think it's raw. You can also use that sauce, but you can also grab a piece of the crab. Oh, look at that. That piece is full of meat. Okay, it's raw. You can see how it's transparent on the inside and then just marinated in that sauce. Oh. Mm. oh, that's stunning. Oh yeah, that's raw. It's a little bit slimy, but in a really good kind of way. It's really garlicky. It looks spicy, but it's not really spicy. Um, and then the chili flavor is a little bit sweet as well. It is a little slimy, but it just also melts in your mouth at the same time. Next banchan I'm gonna try is a block of tofu with some chili paste on top and some sesame seeds. Oh yeah, oh that just wiggles. Oh, it's so soft and tender. You gotta get it to your mouth fast before it breaks out of your chopsticks. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so soft. Oh, it just dissolves. Tapsu. Tapsu Galbi. Oh, Tapsu Galbi. Okay, that's the name of the restaurant. This place is amazing. If you are in Incheon, she is so friendly, she's so nice. And amazing food. That's one of the better 
Korean barbecue experiences I've had. Well, partly because it's just like a home family run restaurant. Oh, back into the cold. And also her balance of dishes was perfect. Thank you, thank you. That was absolutely awesome. Back into the fridge. <laughs> no, that means hello and goodbye, right? I think so. <laughs> Micah. Hey, it's a little bit warmer than before, isn't it? <laughs> that was just one of those meals that you walk out of the restaurant and you're just smiling. You're just like beaming, shining with light because that meal just lifts you up oh, and just boosts your spirits. That was absolutely sensational. I loved it. Hey, that, that meal alone for me was worth leaving Incheon International Airport to come to Incheon just to eat that and to experience that. Oh, I'm happy now. We're walking towards Chinatown and that's gonna be our last stop before we head back to the airport. And we're gonna walk around here and especially try one famous Korean Chinese dish. But I think we need to walk around for a little while or maybe have another coffee before we eat that next. Uh, but I'm gonna leave Ying and Micah here in the coffee shop and then I'm gonna go walk around and explore Chinatown a little bit just to get some photos. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's too cold. <laughs> mm. And then after that, we'll eat one final meal, hopefully. And most of the Chinatown seems to be filled with Chinese restaurants and little souvenir shops. Uh, and again, it's really, really quiet today, but I'm sure on the weekend it gets, it's, a, it's the type of place that a lot of people come to just walk around for leisure, to eat, and to just enjoy. But I'm gonna, I've decided to take a walk up this flight of steps uh, to see what's at the top and to try to warm up. I'm coming into, I think it's a park up here on the top of this hill. Oh, it's even windier up here. <laughs> oh, really nice though. Really nice and peaceful. <sighs> up here you have a pretty decent view and Incheon is known for its harbor, which is, it's a very major harbor in South Korea, as well as a major hub of transportation, including the airport, which is located here. <laughs> Can I just buy one with the red bean, please? Red bean. Here, I'll buy two thousand won. Thank you. Okay. Be careful. Coming down from the mountain park, I stopped to eat what is one of the the favorite Chinese Korean street food snacks along this road. They have griddles all laid out, and then they fill it with a batter, and then he adds a number of different toppings. You can get the classic red bean, you can get cream, you can get some other other, other different flavors as well. I got the classic red bean, and then it's topped with a another layer of pancake to top it off. So it's like a hockey puck sized uh, snack, and mine is hot and fresh. I got the red bean. You can feel that it's a little bit dense in your hand, uh, yet at the same time, yes, it's kind of heavy, but at the same time, it's it's very squishy, it's very, um, very supple. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh, it's pretty, pretty awesome, actually. The red beans in there are kind of starchy, not overly sweet, and then the batter is like, it kind of has that that kind of sweet meringue, eggy kind of taste to it. The, the batter is also gooey and has that kind of kind of egg white flavor to it. Mm. Oh, I do like that better than I expected to. It's it's really really like soothing, and partly because it's so cold outside and this is so warming. You can feel that going, that warmth going down your belly. We are on our way to the last restaurant uh, to eat what is a dish that many consider when you come to Chinatown in Incheon, you just have to eat it because it's a, yeah, it's a Korean Chinese noodle dish. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah.
jajamian with seafood. With seafood. The final dish in Incheon that I'm here to eat is called jajamian. And it's a it's a very well known Korean Chinese dish throughout throughout South Korea. You'll find it, and it's very popular. Uh, but this is the origin. This is where it's from. It started off as a dish that uh, was brought over from China and then evolved into a Korean Chinese dish. And it started off as a, a dish one one of the first dishes what I was reading uh, that that people would go out. Um, to eat outside from their homes and so it was usually a cheap meal it was usually a lot of laborers would eat it it's filling it's hearty and we're gonna eat it right now We got two different dishes. One is the jajamian, and we ordered the version with seafood. It comes with a bowl of noodles, and there's a fried egg on top with some shreds of cucumber. And then on the side is all the sauce, uh, which is like a very dark, dark black sauce, actually. And there you can see some onions in there, and then pieces of seafood. There's some shrimp. I think there's some squid as well. And then we also got a plate of uh, boiled dumplings, boiled mandu. And I think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the sauce and pour all of it onto the noodles. Oh yes. Oh wow, you can really smell the onions in there. And that looks excellent, all the pieces of seafood in there. I have been to South Korea I think three or four times and I've never had this dish. I've never had jajamian, even though it's 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 so common, it's everywhere, it's a very, very popular dish. But this will be my very first time and I'm happy that I, I saved myself for an original version in Incheon. Uh, and it, I'll, I'll have to admit, it's not the most like attractive looking dish with a really black, dark sauce. Um, you don't really know what flavor to even expect, actually. They're very tangly noodles. Yeah, you might get the entire blob if you try to pick it up without scissor cutting it. Okay, maybe I will scissor cut it real fast. Give it a cut right there in the center. And right there in the center. Oh yeah, I got that egg. I wanna maximize my sauce though on this bite with some of the noodles. The first taste that I really, that, that really comes out nicely is the onions, which taste like they've been sauteed but are still crunchy. And then you've got the seafood in there. The sauce, the soybean sauce, it it's mild and sort of has like a, a little bit of a salty, what could that flavor even be compared to? It's, it's not sweet at all. I was thinking it might be sweet. It's not sweet at all. It tastes like a raw soy sauce flavor almost. I'm impressed by it. Next up for the dumplings. Nice little bite size and you can see the juice which is kind of dripping out of them. You can really taste the sesame oil. The wrapper is a little bit on the thicker side so they're more hearty dumplings. And what's also good about them is they're not overly oily on the inside. You taste that minced meat. I think it must be beef on the inside. Lots of green onions, lots of sesame oil, and yeah, very fragrant, but not too oily. Mmm, mmm. That's just what it, what it needed. With that vinegar, a little bit of saltiness from the soy sauce. Actually, I don't taste any spiciness from that chili at all. Those are good, simple, simple, classic dumplings. Mm. And the meat juices that are inside of the dumplings are, it's good. Back to the jajamian, and I think you can season with more of the black, the black sauce, the paste. I'll add a little bit to this section right here, stir it around. Oh, the egg is over here too. More of those onions, and then I'll add some of the onion as well. Oh yeah, with another piece of raw onion. Some of that egg. Mm, mm. A little saltier, a little more pungent. It, it is like soy sauce, but it's almost like a concentrated like soy sauce to me, but a very, like a 
thick, like a paste soy sauce. Oh, that's excellent. Mm. Oh, you've got the sweet onion. Mm, the onion is sweet and a little bit, a little bit burning. And then you've got that, that soy sauce paste, that soybean paste. I gotta say, that was delicious. Both the mandu, the dumplings, and the jajamian, the, the noodles with that soybean paste sauce and seafood, that was really good. That was my first time to ever have it. And it's, like I said, it's, it's a very, very common Korean Chinese dish. You'll find it all over South Korea, very popular in Seoul. And it also, it's also very, it's also a very famous Korean dish. It's one of the one of the top ten dishes. I'm sure that's in any list of Korean food that you check out. That's going to be the final bite from this Korean food tour of Incheon on an Incheon International Airport layover. Uh, that was that was excellent. That was so much fun. Hello. We just made it back to Incheon International Airport. Ying and I <laughs> both, we were just dozing off for that entire ride. Oh man, it kind of surprised us that we made it to the airport so fast. Okay, we're back to where we started from. Okay, if you have a long layover like this, it's great to do something. But if you haven't been to Seoul, you know, I, I, I would probably recommend going to Seoul. But if you've already been to Seoul and you're looking for another day trip, another outing to go to, Incheon is great. To be honest, it was a little quiet today. It was a little, that was kind of nice at the same time, but then some things weren't open, so that was one of the downsides. However, we found some delicious food. The barbecue was amazing. The, oh, the jajamian uh, meal at the end. Really nice people, really delicious food, and those were experiences that I am very glad we had and that we were able to have on this long layover at Incheon International Airport. So I wanna say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you click subscribe. I'm gonna be publishing lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching this Korean food tour of Incheon. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.